at John Daly or from Jake Fogelnest's Stick Cam Show. Yep. Uh, which you are. Uh, I'm at all the time. On. Yeah. <laughs> I'm at all the time. It's really fun. I love Jake Fogelnest and. Wow. Just chiming in, calling in, <laughs> whenever. It's great. So let's let's all listen to a scene that will give you a taste of what this movie is like. What? He had a vision at the Southern Red Temple prayer field. He talked to a dragon spirit who he thinks can help us. He thinks if he goes to another spiritual place, he can get back to the spirit world. So that wow. is, multiply that by an hour and 43 minutes. That, every line is like that. If, no, no, I will, go, I will go so far as to say she is by far the best actor in this movie. The girl who plays that part is yes. phenomenal. She is the Meryl Streep of this movie <laughs> compared <laughs> to everybody else, including well, Slumdog no. Millionaire. So, you know what I think happened, though, with the kid who's playing the Avatar? I think... <laughs> Because his physicality, you guys, his physicality was pretty great. Physicality. Yes, he just I think they just cheat. cast yeah. him off of, yeah. Well, yeah. You, you know, know how he got do? cast? How? <laughs> he sent a video to M. Night of him doing karate. Okay, so I'm right. Exactly. And that was it. That's he was it. hired. He looks like a video of karate. He looks perfect. He looks like the kid in the anime. Yes. Yeah, I mean... But he's not a not good. And people are like yeah. M Night. We really should audition him in terms of he has a lot of lines to say. A lot of which are make no sense because you wrote them in the script. And he's like, no, no, the kid can do karate. He's in. <laughs> shave was the shave only his head. Let's go. Was, yeah, do the tattoos. It was. I mean, it's like a bad high school play with this with just bad CGI mixed in. It's like, yeah. Oh boy, it's it's like watching kids in suits doing Death of a Salesman. Yeah. yeah it's it, and and, <laughs> and even every part of it is confusing. Like they have an opening scroll where. I really, literally was like, wait, what? Well, I didn't even understand the setup of the movie, and then they continue to set it up every five more minutes, and I don't understand it. Well, you've got, like, you've got the kind of, it is a classic hero's journey kind of Star Wars type of thing, except that where Star Wars goes to great lengths to make it really base simple. Like, he is the chosen one, he's got to learn to use the Force, blah, blah, blah. This, every step of the way, this movie is so confusing and adds so many layers of, like, why do they need to even, why, they've all forgotten how to use powers, who bends this and what, and that last airbender who can do everything actually can only bend air. Right. He hasn't learned yet how to be, well, bend the other. Well, but it's also not, even, it's not yeah. even about the story of a kid who's, like, trying to understand his power, because at some point it's about... These other kids who meet this kid who's trying to understand his power. One like, of whom in the water bend. She's the water yes, bender. Yes, the water bender. And uh, who is not good at water bending? She's not right? good. She's, she's terrible. She's a fool at it. She's terrible. She at it. She freezes water. Except yeah, which yeah. is weird too. Except yeah. for when she is good. Yeah. All of a yeah. sudden, yeah. with they, no explanation. No, they find the scroll. Remember? Yeah. The Her scroll. Mom, you guys, I don't remember. The scroll <laughs> looked like an old 1950s. Like this is how you dance the cha cha yeah. thing. It literally yeah. like I was like <laughs> arms here. Arms go down here, leg goes. It was like it was. It's basically, hilarious. it's basically if you do enough tai chi, the water, earth, or fire around you will go into a ball right next to you, and then it'll shoot. Sometimes you have to do more tai chi. Sometimes you have to do less. <laughs> That's the thing that was crazy to me. I was like, the, you would think that people would just like do some sort of move, and like whatever would fire or air would shoot up, but they have to do elaborate moves, elaborate like yeah. like like eight seconds of like hand motion, hand motion, this, that, the other, and then a little. A bit of water shoots up and is like, yeah. Well, it's, like, it's like watching uh, extended Lord of the Dance scenes, but then their fight scenes. But the other thing was, sometimes that last Airbender is amazing at air. Like he's pulling in air from everywhere, flipping over boats, and then the next thing he's like, poof, just knocking down people. Yeah. He's not like it's like it, it, it makes no sense. Sometimes Here's the he's thing. strong, so he's not. You control air. You're fighting people who need there to be fire around. Yeah. To to hurl fire, right? They can't conjure Maybe. fire. They need to have but, it be but there. At the end, so blow it out. Can. Blow out the fire. Yeah, with your air. With your air, dumb dumb. Or with the water Fair that point. you have at your disposal. It is like Fair a point. terrible game of rock, paper, and scissors. It's like <laughs> yeah. water beats fire, but fire beats air, but yeah. air kind of helps fire. Yeah. Well, but it, then there's also more than just their hands because at one point, I think in the earth section, when I go to the earth colony, I don't know if I'm using any of the right words. There's the one that's shed filled with full. Asians? Yes. He's kicked yes, fire. there's a shed full of tools. Yeah. What were those tools for? Who knows? Yeah, that was, those were airbender tools. But here, just why, I, I want to talk why about Why would the, they need them? I want. Yeah, there was no reason to have tools. They just shot things that were already organic. Here's something. <laughs> why 
was some of the movie Asian, some of the well, movie this is Indian. A huge controversy. Fire, yeah, fire. Well, they, this is a huge. The, the, this the this movie had like a huge controversy associated with it. There was uh, called it was like race bending, which was <laughs> they whitewashed everybody in the cast. Like in, in like it's inexplicable that the the water people are white. They are Eskimos. Yes. Yeah. Right. They are Eskimos. They are white. They are white. Like how white. one of the kids looks like Polly D. He looks like yes. a mini yeah. Polly D. Yeah. And yeah. like. Their nana literally looks like um, like a Connecticut grandma. She has yes. an English accent. But then there are in their village straight Eskimos. Yeah, yeah, right. They with no rhyme or reason. My favorite line is the Slumdog Millionaire shows up in their oh, village and is like, "Bring me your elderly." Which <laughs> what? Ne- never explained why the elderly yeah, why was. Does he bring me your elderly? Because I I think it's because they assume the last Airbender, the Avatar, oh. would be old by now. Got it. So they're oh. looking for an old man. They don't realize it's a boy. He was encased in ice okay. for a hundred years. For right. yeah, for a hundred years with like snuffle up against this yeah. like scary it's dog, the dog from Never 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 Yes, but it was a beaver with a beaver tail. Yes, right. yes. and it floated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because when when they okay, so basically they're walking in the in the wilderness and they see this giant snow globe. It cracks open and there's the boy laying inside of it. Clearly, like trapped in a snow globe, and he's like passed out, like uh, uh, and the and the observation that the older boy makes is like, oh, he's probably exhausted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? what? He was trapped in a ball of beaming light. Why, Why is he exhausted? exhausted? What are yeah. you talking about? He's like, like, sleeping. <laughs> opened a conical sphere of ice to reveal a boy and, and an a giant giant dog. A yeah. giant, uh, just, the dog is it's so huge. It's out. so huge. Yeah. Apparently, they fly on that dog. Like they, they're flying all over the continent with no issues. Oh, like, no yeah. problem. Yeah, I problem like up. when they discover it's flying yeah. and all the Eskimo children are hanging on its uh, fingernails. And the girl goes, <laughs> and the girl Having goes, time. that bison thing can float. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> bison thing can float? I felt like the script was written in Google Translator. Yeah. Like it was sort of like it was written in a foreign language where it's like this is how aliens would write Star Wars or something. Wait, here's just, a question yeah. about the last Airbender though. <laughs> when he was a young, when he was a young child and found out who he was, a baby bender, a baby bender, baby bender. When he's a little bender. <laughs> they told him that he couldn't have a family if he was an yeah. uh, an, the an last, the last airbender. airbender. And that bummed but him out. That yeah. bummed him out. But but <laughs> was he thinking I can't have any children or no? He just wanted to have like thinking, he wanted to have a nine to five job. No, he wanted a nine to five job. And he wanted to come home to his he wife was like and get seven kid. years old. Well, the fact that he's still worried about not being married. He wanted a normal life yep. to come home, feed his giant beaver, <laughs> and <laughs> his uh, lemur bat. There's a lemur bat too. Wait, yeah, the lemur bat yeah. is amazing. Are you referring to his future wife as yeah. a giant beaver? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. His future um, wife as a giant beaver, which he tai chi's open. Now there, he throughout the movie he is being chased by the fire. Continent's military. Oh, they're bad. They're bad. They're bad. for Manvi. Yes. Who? <laughs> and they are the they brownest. Uh, this oh, is the very like brownest. The, the race craziness is that the bad guys are the brownest, <laughs> and everybody else is but like. M Night Shyamalan is the brownest. Ugh, I, I mean, he's a he's a know. you know he's, he's the race of the yeah r- uh, right yes. uh, yeah the, well who knows in this weird racist. world but I mean the the, the military yeah. guy at one point literally says like these are the toughest military guys. And he literally goes like, "Ow, that really hurt!" <clears throat> like he got hit, he got hit in the face, and he's yeah. like complaining like a baby, like, "Oh, <laughs> you hurt my face!" Well, the exposition too. My favorite moment is when some dog millionaire is telling his uncle, I yes. think, some dog millionaire why in the he left. Yeah, why he left the kingdom and why he's a banished prince. And Just to so get this out, no, we're not calling an Indian actor on the show Slumdog Millionaire. It's it literally the kid from Slumdog Millionaire. Slumdog millionaire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So to get this information out, he calls, and maybe I saw this wrong, but he calls a girl over to tell the story, and then he just listens and cries. Yeah. <laughs> That's how we learn that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's let's talk about the narration. I mean, the narration in this movie is phenomenal, and, and the exposition is coming at you. It feels like when you watch this movie, like you're watching the last episode of The Wire, and you're like, wait, who? What happened? Why do I care about this? Like, it felt like there was other things that we missed or the movie was missing scenes. But this is how they try to fill it in. My brother and I live in the Southern Water Tribe, which was once a big city. Our fathers are fighting in the war. My mother was taken prisoner and killed when I was young. 
In this time of war, food is scarce. <laughs> that is a new, that's so much exposition in a moment there. Yeah, and that the whole movie is full of that, and it's not limited to moments of voiceover. Like she talks like that. Okay. People have conversations like that, yeah. like in dialogue, which is uh, it's like video insanity. game editing. It's, yeah. like, it's yeah. like everyone speaking like I am a soldier and I come here to give yeah. you food. Would you like to eat some of my food? You know, what? it's like a, it's exactly it's a cutscene from a video game where it's like you you kill the boss, you go to a scene, and it's like, well, looks like Rakoff got away. You're gonna have to go to Minsk in order to fight him. He's holed up in a no ex nuclear waste dump. You're gonna have to sneak in by cover of night, and they give you the whole next level. That's what this movie is like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're go, you know, we're going up to the Northern Water people to learn the. Yeah, the dragon fairies and well, uh, <laughs> were the fight scenes to you interesting? They were no, not too interesting. They were to they were like uh, so so they would do tai chi. They would conjure a thing, then they would throw it. And it would just like nothing would happen. Like it was so badly done. Even the crazy CGI, like the crazy stuff they put into it, like had no effect. What about no, when <laughs> when they were escaping uh, some sort of village and the last Airbender pull? Like now you again oh. <laughs> at certain points he pulls in some things, other points he pulls in a lot. And at this point he pulls in a lot, and he gets like a big wave of fog to come over this bridge. And then, like, all the soldiers are like, oh, well, we can't go over this bridge in fog. Really? You can't walk yeah. in fog? Like, yeah. you're walking the street. Like, like, oh, everyone stops, and that gives them enough time to run away. <laughs> the, the, the thing that bummed me out about this movie is, and maybe the maybe the um, the anime is this, is I felt like in there is something cool. Like, there yes. are, there could be amazing fight sequences when you have people who control all the elements yeah. and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But these were so boring. Yeah. And everybody would have to do so, such complicated Tai Chi type moves, it would take up way too much time in the fight. And then meanwhile, people have swords. Yeah. yeah. Hey, guys, and why doesn't everybody just fucking fight each other with goddamn swords? Yeah. Run through the water that's being hurled at you because it's water. <laughs> yeah. And then stab someone with your crazy boomerang uh, axe sword. They were literally in a <laughs> prison camp with ev everyone in this prison camp were uh, earthbenders. But yet they were being slaves, and all they needed was an airbender to come in and go, Hey, guys, you should use your earth to kind of beat he up goes, those guys. The kid says, he goes, Earthbenders, why are you letting this happen to you? You are truly powerful and amazing people. He, like, <laughs> he says they are amazing it's people. Like he's giving them a pep talk. <laughs> it was, it was, to me, it's like it really was like they were in a prison camp, and they're all like, well, oh, we shouldn't use our special powers that we all have in this prison camp to defeat our guards yeah. that keep us in a level of misery. Yeah. And we'll just, they were like nice nice about it. Like, oh, we're yeah. caught fair and square. Yeah. Use our powers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're earth people. They're bound to the earth. Oh, I felt right. like that sequence was, was a pretty deep analogy for the Holocaust. Um, <laughs> if you... If there is Here a, we go. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Speaking of Holocaust, I thought I thought you know they, uh, at the very end of the movie the, there was a uh, a huge uh, what's it called a tsunami that the kid conjures. I was yeah. like, hey, too soon. Yeah, Way exactly. Too soon. You know? Way like, too soon. Did you did yeah. you know about the well, tsunami? M Night Shyamalan. Yeah, a ding dongs. <laughs> that was my favorite. Actually, I think my favorite moment was right after the movie ended and the first credit up, the first title page up was written, directed. Produced. That's when I was like, oh, that's when I was like, M. Night Shyamalan should change his name to Boo Fuck You. Because <laughs> every time it's like, written, pronounced, produced, and directed by Boo <laughs> Fuck You. <laughs> well, this, um, obviously this movie is crazy, but there comes a time in every bad movie where you sit back and think, what the fuck? What the fuck? And this is the time where we sit around and talk about that little moment in the movie that was so extreme. Like, uh, like you think about him Die Hard with a Vengeance, where he's like literally having a fight on an airplane.